Hello and welcome to my channel, Sandra's Homespun Life. In today's video, I have a wonderful keto lemon zucchini bread recipe to share with you. It is absolutely delicious and I can't wait to share it with you. And here's a little sneak preview. Isn't that beautiful? Before I start this recipe, there's a couple things I want to point out about this recipe. In the original recipe, which I will have linked down below, it calls for lining your baking loaf pan with parchment paper so that your cake won't stick while it's baking. Well, I have a pretty nice non-stick pan already, so what I'm going to use instead is this uh, Pam baking spray it's got a little bit of flour in it and that's supposed to also help prevent sticking so that's what I'm going to substitute and I'll also be making a few more altercations in the ingredients as we go and I'll clarify those when I get to them so the first thing I'm going to do is add two cups of almond flour into my bowl now the recipe does not say to sift it but that's what I'm going to do anyway because Almond flour seems to have a much nicer consistency when you bake if you do that first. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Now when you get your almond flour sifted down to these little lumps, you could take a spatula or just your hand and finish crushing those up and sift some more. I have my almond flour sifted, so my next ingredient is a half a teaspoon of salt. Two teaspoons of baking powder. And this recipe calls for one half cup of xanthium gum. I'm going to be substituting in flavored gelatin instead. And this is what it looks like. It comes in a little box. And it has four of these little individual pouches. So what I did was open on one and measured out one teaspoon of the unflavored gelatin. So I'm just going to take my spatula spoon and mix that up really well. And then I'm going to set it to the side while I prepare my other ingredients. Okay, now I'm going to be mixing my wet ingredients. I'm going to add one half cup of coconut oil. I bought mine in a liquid form. If you have the jarred kind, then you can just melt it down to half a cup's worth. Now this recipe calls for Swerve granulated sugar. I didn't have the Swerve brand, but I do have the Truvia brand and it's granulated as well. So that's what I'll be using instead. It calls for three eggs, so I'm gonna take a fork and beat those. just gives them a little head start on being able to mix this. Now the recipe also calls for one teaspoon vanilla extract. I just had vanilla flavoring so I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla flavoring and I'll be adding two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. So using my whisk I'm just going to mix that together until it's all well combined. Okay, that's nicely combined, so I'm going to set it to the side. Next, I'm going to take a zucchini, and I'm going to grate it up, and I need one cup worth of grated zucchini. So using a paper plate and laying down a 
paper towel. I'm going to put my grated zucchini out on this uh, paper towel. And the purpose of that is to get the moisture, extra moisture out of the zucchini. So I'm just going to spread that out. And using another paper towel, I'm going to use it to mash down on that zucchini to help absorb all that extra liquid. Now I'm going to take my dry ingredients and fold them into my wet ingredients. Okay, that looks well combined. So next, I'm going to add my zucchini to that. And now I'm going to add a tablespoon of lemon zest. And then I'm going to mix that together. Now my oven is already fully preheated, 325 degrees. So once I get this uh, mixture put over into the loaf pan, it'll be ready to go into the oven. There we go. Okay, I'm going to set that to the side for a moment. Now I'm going to use my baking spray to coat and line my baking pan. Hopefully this will do the trick and my cake won't stick. But you know what? If it does, I'll dig it out of there and I'll eat it anyway. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to put my batter over into my loaf pan. Level that down. And now I'm going to place it in my preheated oven. The direction says to bake this 55 to 60 minutes. It says that if you notice your cake trying to brown too much before it's done, that you can cover it with aluminum foil. Uh, the recipe, uh, they recommend 45 minutes into baking to cover it with aluminum foil to keep it from getting overly brown before it, the center gets cooked all the way through. So I'm going to pop this in the oven and I'll bring you back when it's done. Okay, I've removed my cake from the oven. I'm going to allow it to cool slightly before I put it out on the wire rack to cool. Now this is how I baked mine. I set the timer for 55 minutes. 40 minutes in, I took me a sheet of aluminum foil and placed over the pan while it was baking. Didn't fold it down around the sides. I just placed a flat sheet over it. And then I allowed it to continue to cook until the 55 minutes was up. Then I removed the aluminum foil and I allowed it to bake for five more minutes for, for a total of 60 minutes. So I'm gonna allow this to cool slightly and I'm gonna try to turn it out on my wire rack and hopefully no sticking. <laughs> Oh, it turned out beautiful, you all. Lost a little chunk here on the side, but that's just a little snack to try out the for the taste. Oh my gosh. That was the most delicious bite of a lemon zucchini bread that I have ever ate in my life. No joke. The recipe has a, a recipe for a, a white lemon glaze that, that you can drizzle over this. But I'm telling you right now, this is sweet enough that you don't really need it. I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. Um, but it's sweet enough as is, really. But I'm sure that the white drizzled icing over it is going to make it look really pretty. So I'm going to allow that to cool the rest of the way, and I'll bring you all back when I go to stir it, make my icing to drizzle over 
my cake. I'm so tickled with this recipe, you all. Get ready for those zucchinis at the farmer's market, you all. If you try this recipe, you're going to be buying them. <laughs> so bring you back in just a moment. I'm back now guys I've allowed my cake to cool and it's still a little bit warm to touch but in her recipe that's when she says to fix up the icing to go over top of the cake to pour on it so I'm going to move this to the side and I'm going to put together the ingredients to make our icing the recipe calls for one third cup of confectioner's swerve and I'll show you a picture of it right here This is confectioners down at the bottom. So I'm going to mix this in a measuring cup here. I think it'll be easier. And then it calls for four tablespoons of lemon juice. Now I had only one extra tablespoon of lemon juice left from the lemon that I juiced. So I did have to add three additional uh, tablespoons of lemon juice from the bottle like you buy in the store. But I don't think that's going to hurt it any. So I'm going to slowly add this a little bit. Use my whisk. I'm going to mix it up. And you all, that's pretty thin already. And I only used one and a half tablespoons. So I don't know if it's supposed to be thinner than that. I don't know if you can see that very well. It's very thin. So I'm going to stop right there and just use what I have in here already. By adding that extra lemon juice, it's just going to make that even thinner and watery. Maybe that's the ideal. But I don't think I want mine that thin. So I'm just going to set that to the side and go with what I've got fixed right there. Now I'm going to take my aluminum foil that I had placed over my loaf pan when the zucchini bread was baking. I'm just going to use it to lay under my wire rack when I drizzle this icing over it. That way to catch the mess. <laughs> so next I'm going to drizzle my icing mixture over top of my zucchini bread. I believe this is going to work out fine because the, the zucchini bread by itself was already so sweet. I really don't think we need all that extra icing necessarily. So there it is. Isn't it beautiful? So I'm going to transfer it over to my platter, slice it up, and give it a try. Now that I have my cake finished and I've already got my icing on top, I'm going to cut into it, get me a slice, and give it a try. And I know it's going to be good because I already got a little taste a while ago. <laughs> Mm. I'm almost speechless. <laughs> this is so delicious. You would never know it was keto. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Mmm. When I was reading the comments on this recipe, 
I noticed there's a lot of people really saying, oh, this is the best keto bread I've tried. And now see why. Absolutely delicious. And you'd never guess that almond flour was the main ingredient instead of flour. Absolutely delicious. Now, according to her nutritional information on this, for there should be 12 slices in this at half an inch slice. And it's 21.3 total carbs, but she says after she subtracted the sugar alcohols and you know the fiber and so forth, the net carb is 3.1 grams net carbs per slice. Can't beat that. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell to stay up to date on my videos. Be sure to like, leave a comment, and until next time guys, bye.